Now Mercedes have achieved what I think is an engineering masterpiece for one particular EV component of this vehicle. We're getting into that soon. Mercedes-Benz were one of the first automakers to show interest in electric vehicles following their early investment in Tesla. Now Mercedes already offer a number of fully electric vehicles. However, today we're checking out this plug-in hybrid. My name is Luke, this is The Future is Electric, and today we are checking out the EV tech in this Mercedes A-Class 250E. So by the end of 2022, Mercedes-Benz will be offering an electrified vehicle in each one of their car categories. And by 2025, they envision that 50% of their sales will come only from electric and plug-in hybrid. In that same year, they will only release fully electric platforms. And by 2030, they envision that they will be selling full electric vehicles globally. Now, Mercedes have been dabbling in hybrid powertrains since 2009. And this car has a combustion engine equivalent, the standard Mercedes A250, which is actually being built on the same production line as this 250E model. Now, interesting note about that um, factory and all Mercedes, all European Mercedes factories will actually be running on full renewable energies by the end of this year which i think is a great step forward now a funny thing about this car the exhaust or rather the exhaust tips you see at the back are actually 100 percent fake they are simply a design element of course this car does have a real exhaust since it does have a standard petrol engine in the front and um, but they've hidden the exhaust in the center uh, of the car facing downward so the exhaust tips at the back completely fake so this is a water-cooled 15.6 kilowatt hour battery pack. It is the third generation of battery pack we're seeing from Mercedes-Benz. They're doing this with their partners, LG Chem, who supply the actual battery cells. Interesting to know that in this third generation of battery packs, they are changing the cell chemistry. So before Mercedes used to opt for a lithium ion phosphate battery, which had a cell capacity of 22 amp hours. Now for this third generation, they've moved into lithium, nickel, manganese, cobalt batteries, and that has allowed them to increase the per cell capacity to 37 amp hours. So this is a plug-in hybrid. So the battery is quite small compared to fully electric vehicles. However, you get a WLTP range of 56 kilometers. Now in Malta, we average just 20 kilometers a day, given the island is actually just 31 kilometers in length. And in most cities, city like driving fields, that is going to be a realistic range. So you can probably run this vehicle in full electric mode, obviously saving a ton on costs, um, for 56 kilometers thereabout. So you're going to probably be able to use this vehicle in full electric mode, having to charge it every, every day, every two days, maybe, maybe every three days. So like we've seen in my Mitsubishi plug-in hybrid review linked above, this plug-in hybrid, you can also modify the region strength using these very nice paddle shifters behind the steering wheel. There are five region modes. Um, they're D minus minus, D minus, a D auto, D plus, and D plus plus. The auto mode is actually uses the same technology as we saw in the smart, which I go into detail in that review linked above once again. And that uses the front-facing radar to automatically adapt the region strength. On the strongest regeneration mode, I have to be honest, it is nowhere as strong as we're seeing in electric vehicles. Um, region being how much the car decelerates as soon as you let go of that accelerator to charge, to use that energy to charge the battery again. Two charging options in this vehicle. A standard AC charging options using type two connector which can charge the car at seven kilowatts, which means you achieve a full charge in around two hours. However, then you can take an optional DC fast charge. In the video we're showing, as you can see, the DC fast charge port is blanked out. It is an option. And that is a 22 kilowatts DC fast charge, which can charge the vehicle in just 25 minutes. So the electric motor for me has to be the highlight of this vehicle and I think it is an engineering masterpiece. So 
in all the other plug-in hybrids I've reviewed and I've done research on so far, you have a petrol engine, you have a gearbox needed with a petrol car, then you have an electric motor, which is taking power from the battery. Now what Mercedes have done here, I think is brilliant. So there is no separate electric motor. They've integrated the electric motor into the car's traditional gearbox. And they've done this by extending the gearbox housing just by 5.6 centimeters. And that is enough space to fit in the electromagnet and everything involved within the electric motor, which I think is a brilliant idea. Now the electric motor is a permanent magnet, synchronous motor, as we've been seeing in a lot of electric vehicles. The electric motor ends up delivering 75 kilowatts of power, which translates to 99 brake horsepower just from the electric motor. And that achieves a torque of 300 Newton meters and you have a top uh, speed in EV mode of 140 kilometers. Now the car does do 0 to 60 in just 6.6 .6 seconds. However, it does turn on the petrol engine to achieve that. So it uses the initial EV punch to get off the line, but then soon quickly soon after starts the petrol engine if you're new here please subscribe to the channel it does help us a lot like if you've enjoyed the content and want to see more comment if you have any questions or want to start the discussion i try to get back to as many comments as possible i'd like to thank kind for letting us take out this mercedes a 250e peter for helping out with all the technical and if you weren't convinced yet i hope you now agree that the future is electric Thank you.